Thank you, Cherry, for that wonderful introduction. Hello, everyone. My name is Omotla Thomas, and I'm very excited to be here. I'm going to be speaking to you today about building local and global alliances or partnerships. But I want to start by first saying thank you to uh, Eli, to Kathleen, Alina, the entire WPC team for putting together such a remarkable Congress. Well done. I also want to say thank you to the two previous speakers, Rune and Kathy, for sharing uh, such personal insight into their Parkinson's disease journeys. I want, I hope to be able to build on and expand on what they have talked about. So let's get right into it. Why do we need to build local and global Parkinson's alliances? Um, I am not an expert on building or maintaining uh, global relationships, but perhaps I can use some of my personal experiences to help answer that question. Now, here's what I've observed. Many of us in, within the Parkinson's community, we tend to want to view our community as one unit, but the reality is that we are not one unit. We are subdivided into two categories, two separate buckets, those who have and those who don't have. Now, I don't mean those who have Parkinson's and those who don't have Parkinson's. I'm talking about access, those who have access and those who don't have access. One group here has access to the information, the education, support, resources, and treatment options that they need to be able to use to live well with Parkinson's disease. This group here, they don't have that type of access. This group has access to groundbreaking research opportunities and clinical trials that are shaping the future of disease modifying therapies and treatment options for Parkinson's disease. This group on the other hand, no such access. This group has access to platforms like this Congress to be able to come on and and share their, their experiences and thoughts and ideas, this group does not have that type of access. I could go on and on with that list, but I'll stop there. What I find really, really sad is that a person's place of birth, not their habits, not their intellect, not their drive, their zeal, their passion, not their work ethic, not even the choices that they make in life, but the place of their birth, something that is entirely out of their control, is one of the biggest factors into determining which of these two buckets they end up in. That cannot be okay. Now, I understand that that is the reality for many people across the world in, in, the, in, the society, in this global society that we live in today. However, if we say that we are united for Parkinson's, if we say that we are truly one community, then we must renew and accelerate our efforts into making sure that we merge those two buckets together. Why? If there are any lessons that we have learned from this current pandemic, it is the realization that we are all global citizens. And regardless of our geographical boundary lines or borders, regardless of our political, cultural, or philosophical differences, or whether we were born into developed nations or impoverished ones, we are all interconnected. And what affects me ultimately in some way, shape or form can and probably will end up affecting you. And the same goes for the reverse. Until we, when, when we all finally get this, when, when, when we all finally truly understand this fact, those of us who are fortunate to be in this bucket of those who have, will start to see global partnerships more as a necessity and less, of, less as, as an optional thing or as a, a goodwill gesture. We have to come together and work together for our collective good. A lady by the name of Virginia Burden said it best, and I quote, cooperation is the, thorough on, is the thorough conviction that nobody can get there unless we all get there. In our Parkinson communities today, we all need to get there. And because of our indisputable interconnectedness, 
We all need to get there together, but we cannot do that alone. This is why global and local partnerships are so important. We've talked a little bit about why these partnerships are important. Now let's talk about how to build these partnerships. Before I go into how you can build your global and local alliances, my first question to you is this. Are you even ready to take such a step? Let's go back and look into Rune and Kathy's talk for a minute. Have you taken the crucial steps of building and maintaining your personal relationships or creating your own Parkinson's disease network? These are very important steps to take before trying to expand into building global and local partnerships. Now, today I am very heavily involved in the Parkinson's community, but I can, I, I, it is absolutely impossible for me to do even close to half of the work that I do without the constant support and the sacrifices of my immediate and my extended family, my friends and my own network of Parkin my own Parkinson's disease network. It is just not feasible. It is not possible for me to do without their support and their help. So establishing that foundational foundation of support is, 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 an, is a critical step before one can think of expanding to building global and local partnerships. So assuming that we have that covered already, let's go back to the question of how do we build partnerships? How do we build local partnerships? How do we build global partnerships? Well, two organizations have greatly simplified that process and I'll talk about them in a minute. But first, let me share my personal experiences on this subject matter. I started where I was with what I had. I started with my local Parkinson's disease um, support group organization. I volunteered, I helped fundraise, I attended events, I networked. Now, if you don't have your own local support group organization close to you, reach out to the national one. And if you don't have a national organization, reach out to international uh, Parkinson's disease organizations, reach out to virtual support organizations, there is no formula for this. You simply start by putting yourself out there. And slowly but surely, one contact after the other, one contact leads to another. And before you know it, the network has grown. Now to the two organizations I was referring to earlier, both of which are very near and dear to my heart. The first one is the WPC, the organization that is hosting this uh, virtual Congress today. Now, if you are looking to expand your networks and partnerships, then you really can't go wrong by attending one of the triennial congresses that the WPC hosts. I remember my first congress, it was in 2019 in Kyoto. I met so many different people from different fields and different walks of life. I met scientists and researchers, doctors, other healthcare professionals, Parkinson's advocates, care advocates. It was such a rich and memorable experience and one that one that I, I'm, I'm very grateful to have had the opportunity to, to partake in. Now, the next Congress will be held in Barcelona next year, 2022. And I hope to be able to see as many of you there as can make it. Now, the second organization is none other than the Parkinson, the PD Avengers. Now, you really need not look any further, further than the PD Avengers if you're trying to build local and global partnerships. That is literally why the organization was established. I can't go into all the details in the time that I have, but if you need more information, please go to pdavengers.com. That's about it really. Um, I hope in the little time that I had, I was able to shed some more light or some light on why and how to build local and global partnerships. Let me leave you with this quote from Helen Keller. Alone, we can do so little, but together, together we can do so much. Now, to those who may not be aware of who she was, Helen Keller lost her sight and hearing at 19 months due to an illness. Now, through the coaching and lifelong partnerships formed between her and her teacher, Anne Sullivan, Helen learned to read. Not only that, she went on to become an author, an activist, and a lecturer. 
Think about that. If a 20-year-old teacher in the 19th century could form a partnership and teach a deaf and a blind seven-year-old girl how to read and to communicate, imagine with me, please, just imagine what we can achieve today with our alliances and our partnerships if we just put our hearts and minds to it. Thank you.